Hello families, how are you? I hope you're all staying safe and healthy at home. Thank you for tuning in to Fun with Numbers, episode one. My name is Cindy, and I'm going to sing a few number songs, and Marie, my colleague, will do some activities. Let's start with some counting. Can you count with me together? This is number one. One. This is number two. Two. This is number three. Three. This is number four. Four. This is number five. Five. This is number six. Six. This is number seven. Seven. This is number eight. Eight. This is number nine. Nine. This is number ten. Ten. Now I want us to try to count the number one more time. So let's count with our fingers. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten fingers on our hands. Let's sing the finger song together. One little, two little, three little fingers, four little, five little, six little fingers, seven little, eight little, nine little fingers, ten fingers on my hand. Yay! And you know what? I know some animals want to join our number songs too. Guess who's coming to sing with us? What's this? It's two little birds. One, two. Two little birds sitting on a hill. One named Peter and one named Paul. Fire away, Peter. Fire away, Paul. Come back, Peter. And come back, Paul. Two little birds here. One, two. And now we're going to say bye bye, birds. Hmm, who's going to come this time? Let's see. It's a bee. You want to make a beehive? Let's try. We put the hands like this, and then we use the other hand to cover the beehive. Here's a beehive. Where are the bees? Hidden away where nobody sees. See them come creeping out of the hive. One, two, three, four, five. Bye bye, bees. And guess who's going to come this time? Let's see. <gasps> Five little monkeys. One, two, three, four, five. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkey jumping on the bed. How many monkeys left? One, two, three, four. Four little monkey jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkey jumping on the bed. How many monkey left? Three. One, two, three. Three little monkey jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkey jumping on the bed. How many monkeys left? Two. One, two. Two little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, 
No more monkey jumping on the bed. That's the last one. One little monkey jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor. And the doctor said, "No more monkey jumping on the bed." And we say bye bye monkeys. Bye bye. Now we're going to review all numbers with our number books. This book is called My First Numbers, published by Really Decent Books Limited, illustrated by Stephen Barker. Let's see what's inside the book. This is one elephant, number one, two giraffe. Number two and three lions. Number three, four dogs. Number four, five fish. Number five and six cats. Number six. Seven monkeys, number seven, and eight birds, number eight, and nine bugs. You see all the bugs? Nine bugs, and ten butterflies. How many animals can you see in this page? Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They got ten animals in this page. That's the end. Bye bye, books. Now Marie is going to do some activities with you. Are enjoying the first episode of Fun with Numbers. So for the activity, we are going to be doing two different activities. The first one is we're going to make a parking spot for cars, and the second activity is we are going to be making a pretend fishing pond that children will enjoy. Okay? So with our first activity, let me tell you what materials we need. Let me just get it. Ta-da! Okay, so for the parking activity with cars, we would definitely need toy cars. So if your child has tracks, cars, race cars, uh, fire engines, trains, anything that they'd like to park, so you can add that to this activity. So I would say collect all the cars that you'd like to use. So for this example, I'm going to be using five cards, okay? We would also need some markers to draw the numbers and to draw the parking lines in our garage. And we would need scissors for adults because you need to cut the flaps of the box. So I already cut it for this episode so that it, the process would just be faster and you'd need tape. So for me, I'm just gonna use green tape. And the most important part is you need your parking spot. So for me, I just have this box and you can definitely use different types of boxes that you have at home. Either a pizza box, a shoe box, an Amazon box, any type of box, a cereal box, that would also do. Okay, so let's begin. It's very simple and it's something that children can enjoy over and over again. So if they, if, they're, if they become bored, then you can definitely hide it for a few days and then bring it out just to rotate the materials that you have at home, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to be cutting pieces of tape that I will be attaching to the cars. So adults, you need to do this cutting 
So because I have five cars, I would definitely need five pieces of tapes. Okay. The next step is you're going to get your cars and you're going to put that piece of tape on top of the car just like this. numbering them using a marker. I'm going to choose a marker. Parents, what you can do is if you want to help your child to write the numbers and they don't know how, you can do hand over hand and you can show them how to write the numbers. So for me, I have written one, two, three, four, and number five. And so I'm going to put the cars aside and I'm going to get my box. And with your child's help, you can both decide where you'd like to have your entrance. So you can ask your child if they'd like the entrance to be on the longer side or on the shorter side. Okay. So definitely, if you want more space, then you would choose to, to make the entrance the shorter side. So I'm going to cut an entrance. It's a little bit tough. The, the, the harder the cardboard you have, the tougher it is to cut it. So for me, I just made a flap just like this. So two straight cuts and there's a flap for the garage. Okay, so this is the entrance. And you can also put the words open over here and then close over here. So you can help your child to write the letters of those words. I'm gonna write the word open. Side. So definitely if you have preschoolers, you can involve them in getting to know their letters. So let me just show you. Open and if it's closed, then they can see the word closed. Okay? And then the next thing that we are going to be doing is we are going to be making our lines for the parking spot. So you can also introduce to your child the different types of making a parking line. So it could be straight, it could be wavy, it could be curly, it could be swirly. So it's up to you and your child how much creativity you want to put into this. So I'm going to get a few markers and I'm going to write um, those lines and also I'm going to be putting numbers. So families, here is a zoom in version of the parking garage and you can see that we have our open sign and our closed sign and we have our parking spot number one, two, three, four, five and at the very back we actually have our ticket booth. So I put the green tape so they can associate green with um, money so they have to pay over there. So the basic, the basic concept that we'd like to teach children here is matching numbers. Matching the numbers that we have here in the parking garage with the numbers that they have, okay, with the cars. So I have number one here, park it here. Number two, go in the number two spot. Number three goes in the number three spot. And number four goes to the number four spot. And number five goes in the number five parking spot. And if you have people or Legos, um, or you can make paper paper people, and you can 
put a person over here as the person collecting the tickets or uh, taking money. And so this is a simple yet fun activity that you can do with children at home. And again, you can be as creative as you like. You can put a few drawings. You can talk about making straight lines, making curves, and you can add more things to it. Okay? So I hope you enjoy this activity and we are now going to our second activity. We are now going to be doing our pretend fishing pond activity and let me tell you what materials we would need. So first of all, we would need a large container such as this. If you have any um, small basin or if you have any small Tupperwares at home, you can definitely use those. And we have to get some carton. This would be our pretend fish later on. You would need some scissors to cut those fishes. You would need some markers if you'd like to draw the little fish. And you would need spoon to catch the fish. So I would suggest parent get one spoon and the child get one spoon. And same as with the container. So this container will be where we would be putting the fishes, okay? And last but not least, you would need, of course, water. You would need water. If you prefer to play this activity when your children are taking a bath, um, you could definitely do this one in the bathtub as well. Okay, and just to let you know, if you are planning to do it indoors, make sure that you have towel available um, in case there's any um, spillage of water, okay? But this is a fun, a little bit messy activity, but it would sure prolong your children's attention and engagement, okay? And you can definitely do a lot of different skills such as turn-taking, sharing, counting, sorting. So, so many different skills that you can teach your child with this activity. Okay, so first things first, we are going to be making the fish. Oops. So to make cutting simple, and if you are introducing cutting skills um, with your child, definitely you can help them by holding the piece of cardboard. And we're just going to be practicing cutting straight lines and making little squares. Okay, I'm just gonna do that really fast and show you. So I'm gonna show you that I've cut a few strips of paper over here. Okay, and I'm going to quickly draw. So if you're with your child, of course, take your time. And for me, I am going to be drawing a few fishes. The next thing that we're going to be doing is we are going to be cutting the pieces of fish. So with the help of your child, you can hold the cardboard for them just like this and do hand over hand with your other hand and just cut it straight. There you go. So I'm just going to continuously do that. The more fishes that you have, it would be better if you had a bigger container or a bigger basin. So I'm just going to show you the little fishes that we have over here, our pretend fishes. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have the containers ready. Okay. So I now have my container, I have my spoon ready, and now we're going to be adding water. Okay, so first add the water before you put your fishes inside. We have now poured the water in the basin. And so we are going to be adding our fish. So you and your child can take turns adding the fishes that you have. And the concept of this pretty much is also teaching your child patience and turn taking and sharing with you. If you'd like to put more fishes in your container, then I would suggest to have a larger container for sure, or else they would be crowding. Okay, now that we have our fishes over here, you're going to take a spoon, and this also helps promote their fine motor skills by 
trying to keep the spoon balanced in their hand. So you can choose which container is for the adult and which one's for the child. So for me, I'm going to scoop a little fish and put it in my container. And you can take turns until all the fishes are finished and have been taken from the water. And you can count how many you have collected, how many blue fishes, green fishes, or pink fishes you've collected. So in my case, I, I could be doing that. Families, so remember before you throw out those pieces of cardboard that you have at home, you can definitely make them into this little floating fishes and do a fishing activity with your child. Ta-da! I hope that you enjoyed the circle time today and the two different activities that we did for episode number one. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in episode two. Have a great day, everyone!